Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to Mondays with Max. How you guys all doing? Hope you guys are all doing well. I think she finally got in under she, Chrome wouldn't let her sign in under for YouTube and anything. It was really strange. So I have to figure that out after the stream. But she's signing into Edge. Hopefully that works. Is asking you for your Microsoft password? Yes. <laughs> That's. No, it's asking me, what's the thing say at the top? It says your email address, right? It says password. I understand that. What does it say at the top? It's your email address. It's the same password. All right. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, guys. Well, first thing before we I do the roll call and all that, no super chats tonight. Um, I pinned a message, um, so I want to make sure that um, any donations from the stream tonight go to Oval Vortex family uh, and his charities. So Lorovic from the Meter Box uh, has set up a link uh, for a donation. So uh, I know some people who are outside the country. Uh, outside the U.S., we're having some issues. Um, work with somebody, hopefully, in the U.S. that might be able to figure that out for us. But uh, anyway, um, please use that. Um, all right, guys. And I am not muted for a change. So, yes, old boy, you're, you're helping me out already. Um, all righty, guys. Let me uh, do a quick roll call here. Uh, let's see. Burn says he was second, but I can't see who was first because I pinned the comment. Uh, Alexander Fleener, Canadian miner, Crypto Crag, Arcs Crypto Mining, Son of a Rabbit, um, Mia and Milo Mining, Alex, uh, second TL, Retro Mike, good talking to you today. Uh, All Set, Scott Sheffield, Chump Change, yes. We're all feeling a little brokenhearted, that's for sure. Um, Nick Riley, Son of a Rabbit, Black Hat Team, Paddywhack Miner, DJ Mines. Good to see you, sir. Uh, <laughs> seven minutes ago. No, you wanted it like 45 minutes ago because you wanted me to start at 7.30. Be honest. Uh, Joker Miner, good to see you, sir. Bad Ace. Uh, let's see who else. Brandon Coin is here. Good to see you, sir. Uh, let's see who else. Gordon Murray giving me a hard time. Love it. Gaming with Smokey Dan. Uh, Strange Tamer Tains. Good to see you. T Dub. Mike the Miner. Shark Farmer. Lester Dog C57. T Dub. Kyle Rosa. I think I said all set already, but I'm not sure. And I think that pretty much Jean Francois cannot leave him out. Cannot leave him out. The Toxic Miner, Integra Guy 041, as I said, not to be confused with Integra Guy 042. Um, <laughs> Rusky's Crypto Cave, Marvin Medina. I just said Retro Mike. No super chats. Just tag me. I'll read it. I promise you. And I will read it when I come across it when I get down to there. Yeah, I know. Like I said, it is. Ovalbore looking out for me. It's the only explanation that can be there. Um, let's see here. Who else? Sadie Sometimes. Nick Riley. Sorry, I started reading comments instead of reading names. Uh, Sadie Sometimes. Nick Riley. Uh, all right. I think I pretty much hit most people. Sorry if I did not. Uh, Dakar Tech. That'll be the last one I hit. Because I don't want to miss any comments tonight. Um, let's see here. Uh, Gordon Murray, just kidding, buddy. You're the best. I know you were just kidding. Uh, but doesn't mean that it's not well deserved because I was late tonight. Um, had some things. Some people were asking me for some help today on a few things. Um, and wanted to get a little nap in because I was up late helping somebody else with some things. And, um, yeah. So anyway, um, Joker Miner, yes, we hear you. Yeah, you heard me trying to help out Sunflower Mama. Who, okay, she is in. Uh, it's dumb. <laughs> it's dumb, yes. Her computer's being dumb. I mean, you can just try restarting it. That might work. Either that or we'll have to uninstall Chrome and reinstall it. Because that is just silly. She's signing in with the right password and Chrome's giving her an error. Uh, 
Anyway, oh, now we got to change the password. They might have heard it. Uh, anyway, but you don't know her, her email address, thankfully. Um, <laughs> Chum Chain's like, at least he's not talking about his moves again. <laughs> uh, Max on a hot mic ro equals roasting me. I know it. No, that obviously, no. There was nothing on there about anything other than trying to get her computer up and running. I promise you. Um, you were talking the whole countdown. I don't even remember what I was saying, but I don't think it was anything bad. I think part of it was just trying to figure out what she was doing. Anyway, all right, that seems to be everybody that uh, had a, tagged me in something. Uh, again, tonight, uh, Retro Mike did a super chat. I didn't even, oh, there it is. Somehow I got past it. One only promise fast as trash. Zill also trash. Well, okay, I'll I'll grant you that. Um, I'll make sure that I will do a plus five on my donation. Um, but, um, anyway, um, but yes, that'll be one thing that I do miss. I'm going to leave most of the, of the things for, uh, overboard tech towards the end. Cause I probably have trouble getting through it, but, uh, um, but yes, that is one thing I will really really miss well i'm going to talk about it now just because it's top of mind and it's everything i've got going through my mind right now um so yeah uh the <sighs> retro mike actually hit me up and it really kind of hit home today he basically just sent me a message saying hey you you heard about this project i'm doing that i was working on with um uh with ovalbor tech on and uh uh, really want to put his favorite uh, stickers from his favorite YouTubers on there. And I just kind of just got me. Uh, thank God it was near the end of the day at work and I could leave at the time. But yeah, it, it really, it, it, it really got me. Cause you know, at that point it was kind of like, yeah, overboard tech's always here and he's always giving me a hard time about vast. And I love it. And I miss it. Um, I mean, it was the first one without him, but I know I'm going to miss it. So retro Mike, it's on your shoulders to continue to give me a hard time about vast. Um, I'm not a huge Zill proponent. Um, so that isn't, uh, so much of a thing with me, but, um, but yeah, uh, yeah. And the thing is, is we disagreed about it, but the great thing, and you guys all know this about oval you can, he, you can disagree with him and you can agree to disagree. He was that type of guy. Not everybody is like that. And I really appreciate it. He was a very mature guy. Um, and that, like I said, that was one of the things I really appreciate, appreciated about him is that, yeah, he was very strong, strongly opinionated, but it was okay if you disagreed with him. He didn't not like you because he didn't agree with you or because you didn't agree with him. Um, you could still be friends while still having a disagreement. I mean, of all things that one thing was pretty much the only thing we disagreed about. Uh, so we agreed on many, many other things. Um, the one thing I particularly appreciated was uh, his just his sarcastic wit. Um, I remember having a conversation with him and just telling him that I found, you know, I kind of, you know, I look at like somebody like uh, geek of all trades and, uh, Ovalbor Tech as having that sarcastic wit. They're so entertaining by themselves, just being themselves um, because of that. And I just always enjoyed uh, his streams. And I always enjoyed him coming in here and, and, and trolling me. Uh, he was such a nice troll. Uh, <laughs> so I, I will miss him as we all will. Um, yeah, I... Actually, one thing I will will show you now, um, but this has to do with uh, the Ellie Pal promotion. But I got in the mail from them a um, uh, one of their seed phrase things, and I thought I would have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, so I made this. It's kind of uh, there. We go. It's a little bit easier to read. Overboard Tech, we love and miss you. Rest in peace. So moving on, 
Um, yeah, sorry guys. Um, all right. What else are we going to talk about tonight? Oh, uh, let's talk about the market. Um, all right, hold on one second while I pull up coin market cap and share my screen. So we are below 64,000 on Bitcoin. Uh, so definitely still in, I don't know, I consider it kind of trading sideways. Uh, question is, you know, we found a range. Here, let me actually bring up the chart. And let's, let's bring it out a little bit more than a day. So this is the seven day. So kind of have hit this range uh, for the last few days of between like 61 and 64. Let's even go out a little bit further. Yeah, it's just kind of been going up and down this range. Uh, if you look at it, actually now that you think about it, it's just a wide range. Everybody was talking about this being like a market crash because of this quick down. But if you look at it, you know, now I'm looking at it, maybe it has nothing to do with being a crash. It's just normal volatility. I mean, look at this. You look at it from the one year you have from March through where we are now, and it's just trading in this range where it's found this range. Um, you know, people were talking about it was a rising wedge. I don't see it as a rising wedge. I see it as a regular wedge. You know, the, the higher higher highs are actually coming down, so there's lower highs, and then you have the the lows are going higher, so therefore you got a regular wedge. It doesn't seem to be consolidating very fast, so we could be in this range for quite a while. Um, but remember, back on, you know, end of February to beginning of March, we just had this rocket ship from, you know, 51 to 62, just boom, just a few days. And then it just never came back. So even if we, you know, hit back at, the $50,000 range. I don't know if we'll get down that far again, but even if we did, it's not, it's not that bad. If you look at where we were at the beginning of the year, we were at 42. We'd still be up from the beginning of the year. So I don't see this. I just see this as more of an opportunity. Um, could it go down further? I mean, that's the real question, but that's what everybody asks when they're trying to decide whether to buy the dip. And, uh, Way I look at it is just continue to dollar cost average. Uh, let's look at some of the other charts. Let's look at uh, the Solana chart because this will probably look look a bit different. A little bit, but not too much different actually. Um, you know, it's it went up at the beginning of March as well. Um, it continued to go up, and now it's kind of come back down to where it was uh, on March 10th. So it's obviously retracted a bit more than Bitcoin, but you know, still doing well. Um, I actually would like to see this one maybe come back down to a hundred so I could buy in a bit more at that point. Um, but I don't know. We will see what happens. Um, the thing is, is that I don't think anybody really knows because the having is right there. The having is coming up this Friday or Saturday appears to be Friday evening is where everybody seems to be kind of coming together on. Obviously, we'll get a more definitive time as we get closer. Uh, but. Oh, sorry. I actually stopped reading the chat. But I think I'll probably read the chat more often. It'll just be easier for tonight. Gaming. Let's see. Uh, hold on. Let me go up. I'm going to go down as things were being typed. Um, Polish Miner says, how's it going? It's going okay. Uh, Nick Riley says, was first in the chat, LOL. I always try to be. Uh, so sorry. You're, you're, you were cut off at the top. Hey, Hawk. How's it going? Uh, let's see. Joker Miner says, I didn't realize how big of a car guy he was. He was so smart on many things. Yes. Yes, he was. And he went whole hog in anything that he was interested in. Uh, Steven Cicero, good to see you, sir. Uh, Pellish said, vast, uh, vast isn't mining. It's for jokes and ha ha's. Yeah. <laughs> Recommend comment. 
I'm going down to it, all right? Except it was relevant to what you were saying. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me see where he was. Oh. Oh, Retro Mike says, whoa, 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 tax day, and we're talking about buying the dip. We're here for tax talk. Oh, my God, I'm so tired of tax talk. That's all I've been doing. There were two people, a person, like I said, the person last night, I was helping out with taxes. I don't mind. Um, haven't seen, I do see that person in the chat now. Um, actually, both people are in the chat that I helped out. Um, <laughs> one person uh, today... Uh, I don't think this person put any of this on social media. I certainly hope not. Otherwise, you're going to know what I'm talking about. But uh, he sent me a message saying, help me. Um, TurboTax is telling me that I owe $140,000 in, in taxes because of my crypto trades. And I'm like, stop. TurboTax is garbage uh, for people like us that mine different things and have a lot more transact it, it's just garbage absolute garbage go to coinly figure it out so he went to coinly and he's like yeah i i have one hundred forty thousand dollars less in taxes due now so uh anyway was glad i could help him out um but yeah if, if anybody wants to talk about taxes i suppose i'm done with mine uh surprisingly uh last night i just decided to really kind of dig in um, Vinny Del Greco, welcome to OnlyFans. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that very much. Uh, Mining King Max, I made it five minutes in. I need help already. <laughs> so he's asking for tax help. <laughs> All right. After the stream, we can talk. Um, unless you want to put the question out here for everybody to see, and then, uh, I'd be happy to help. Uh, all right, let me back up to other people's comments. Uh, though we are still up around 29K from the start of the year. Yes, exactly. We're still up a lot. Um, where's your drink? We all had a drink on stream. Grab a brew. Uh, no, I got to work tomorrow. And I'll, 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 have trouble speaking and drinking. Yes. And uh, yes. And some people have shown that that probably wasn't such a great idea. <laughs> anyway, I will be drinking water. Plus, I think maybe a few of you may know, but I have started to try to really lose weight for a week. Lost about three pounds, four pounds, something like that. So drinking is not a good idea when you're trying to lose weight. So water is really good. So yes, there will be no drinks on a Monday night with the rest of the week ahead of me. That would be a really bad idea. Maybe a Friday night, but not 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 tonight kyle smith welcome to only flance thank you very much guys appreciate it um all right let me go scroll back down and geek of all trades no save the tax talk till november we need to know early what to do to even out those crypto gains uh yeah but but it's a good idea to get into coinly or some other there's there's a couple of services out there now's the time to start that doing it all at the end of the year you're going to remember you're going to forget what you did at the beginning of the year you know it doesn't automatically when you use these services it doesn't automatically know what's mining what's a staking reward what you know was this just a, a deposit where did this withdrawal go um a lot you know coinly is pretty good at matching up uh, withdrawals and deposits, especially when you're using something like uh, a coin swap thing. But because the numbers don't specifically match up, there's a number of them that don't uh, that don't match up. You have to physically match them up. So a lot of that stuff uh, that goes on. Uh, so it's, it does require some work. This year I had over a thousand transactions. Uh, so it did take some time. And I, believe me, I'm not telling you that that's what I did. I'm saying that's what you should do. And hopefully maybe this year I'll heed my advice and actually start doing it now from the beginning of the year until now and then maybe do it every two months. That would be a lot easier. So, uh, but um, take it from somebody in this chat who if they want to speak up, Coinly is worth every penny. It is absolutely worth every penny. Don't use any of the tax software to track your your, your gains. One of the best things about uh, that I have found about Coinly is the fact that 
you can put in there as a uh, preferred um, method of choosing the lot. Because remember, you have you have a basis, but if you've bought multiple times, which lot are you selling? So it will automatically choose, if you choose this, the highest priced lot, meaning that you're minimizing your gains, your, your taxes along the way until the very end when you sell everything or whatever, then you're, you'll be hit with, you know, taxes. But, um, but the, usually the best way would people recommend is, you know, do, do highest, highest in first out usually the best way to do it. Again, there are some other strategies because that usually means that in a lot of cases you're taking short-term gains versus long-term gains because short-term is usually the things you more recently bought with, at the higher prices. So it there's some trade-offs there. Um, but I like the fact that that setting is in there. Um, <laughs> Joker Miner says, my taxes were done in February and got 5K back with all the mining also. Well, good for you. That means you were giving the government too much money in the first place. Uh, there you go, Retro Mike. Just tell them it's vodka. They'll never know the difference as long as I start slurring my words at the end of the stream. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's see. Gaming with Smokey Dan says, if you drink cold water before you sleep, also helps with weight loss. Uh, just drinking in general will help you with weight loss. But yeah, I know, I understand what you're saying. But the other thing is, and this is what I always struggle with, is I always want to see that number go down because you weigh yourself at the same time every day. I have definitely found that if you drink a bunch of water right before bed, the short term result is going to be the next morning, you're going to weigh more because you will not pee out all of that water that you just drank. So I always like to see that number go down. I'm all about number go down, not number go up when it comes to weight loss. And uh, so for me, I try to make sure that I'm drinking a lot of water during the day. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't. Today was an okay day for drinking water, uh, but need to uh, need to do more of it. Uh, Geek of all trades said, just give me your wallet and seed phrases. I'll track your crypto for you. All you guys, trust me, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's actually, like I said, I was really happy that at Ellie Pell sent me this thing. Um, I'm, I'm going to put my seed phrases in there. I just was having a little bit of fun with it and thought it was appropriate to put that in there. Oh, yeah, I guess I can close that since we're just talking. Uh, let's see what else are you guys talking about or max should we continue working out, uh, out the kinks within the coin uh, oh wait a minute need the community's opinion we now have 1 billion cats of crypto tokens made we are having small issues does the community feel we should we should work on the website or should we continue working out the kinks in the coin uh, I mean, I think both need to be done. Uh, but, I mean, I would say work out the kinks in the coin. The website should be relatively easy to do uh, or easier to do than, uh, than working out the kinks in the coin. That's the technical aspect of it. But if you have multiple people on the team, maybe you have somebody who's more, um, you know, makes sense for them to work out the kinks in the coin and makes more sense to have somebody else work on the website. Just my two cents. Uh, I do not know much about the project, but uh, <laughs> Mining King. When Max and our blog just found your new calling. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have thought uh, at, at some points in my life when I had, um, when I was basically kind of like an independent contractor doing various things, I had thought about doing that. And then I saw the people that were actually in the business and I was like, no, no. You have accountants and people that go to accountants and you have people that go to tax people, generally tax people. And I'm this isn't everybody, obviously, but the tax people that I have met have not always been in it for the right reason. That's all I'm saying. They were in it to catch a quick buck. It wasn't about making sure they took care of their clients. It was making sure that somehow, some way didn't matter how that, on the return that they sent into the IRS that got approved somehow um, that the person was getting a bigger refund than they expected. That's it. Didn't matter how they got it. Didn't care whether or not it got a, a, uh, 
uh, an audit or anything like that did not matter to them. Just their customer was going to be happy at that moment because they were getting more money back and they didn't ask any questions because they didn't know. They don't know to ask the questions. So there's, yeah, I, I've, I've witnessed a lot of bad practices with tax preparers and uh yeah maybe it was just people i ran into but i think going to tax preparers is a bad idea you're gonna do it go to an accountant in my opinion joker miner a member for 14 months hashtag cats of crypto thank you sir for being a member very much appreciate it mining king you can be the change trust me i tried doing health insurance trying to be the change no you can't fight the machine definitely cannot fight the machine with health insurance nobody makes money on uh doing health insurance the guys who write health insurance the only thing they make money on is the supplements so they have to sell supplements to survive literally to survive you cannot survive writing you know thousands of regular because you just do not make enough on them. So it's any type of um, uh, Medicaid supplements. And Medicaid supplements are actually good. I used to write those. Um, but yeah, all the other supplements in some cases are valid. I mean, certainly dental is one that's valid. Uh, but most of the ones that really made money, no, they were not. They were not worth the money. Um, I mean, 80 to 90 percent of it was going back on as, as a commission to the agent that's how much those the real cost of those insurance policies are so anyway getting way off track tonight uh let's see <laughs> well uh, i'm not an accountant mining king and that would require me going back to college for four years and at 55 years old 56 years old I'm not about to be a 60 year old graduate. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> will you be a 60 year old? I'll, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Joker Mario says, be safe. Next two days, we suppose to have bad storms coming. Yes. Uh, good point. Uh, it's You have it worse off than we do. Um, you're in a much more severe area uh, or much more higher probability of severe uh, storms, but. Yes, uh, I will be keeping an eye on it and uh, we'll be deciding whether or not to come home from work when I normally do or whether to hang out and uh, possibly head to the uh, tornado shelter that we have within the warehouse. Um, we've done one each of the last two years. We had uh, one year we had a tornado go one mile south of where our warehouse is and uh, the year before we had it go a mile and a half west of us going on a northeast um, uh, path. I was mad at that one because that one I could have gone out and watched because that one was very well structured as far as, and it wasn't very severe tornado at all either. Um, but that one would have been cool to see. But by the time I figured it out, it was already north of us and there's a tree line that I can't see past. So wasn't going to see it. Uh, let's see. All right. Finally got through all of the chat um all right so going back to unless anybody else has tax questions i know everybody loves tax talk <laughs> and i appreciate gaming with smoky dan continuing the ovobor tradition or at least i'm not sure if he's the one that started it but i know he's one of the people that would join in on it so i appreciate gaming with smoky dan keeping that going uh Hot oh, crypto mining says, Max, I was mad I couldn't see the tornado. We we gotta get off this road. The twister, of course. Jeez. It's pretty much only the tornado movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right before the other guy got swooped in, swooped up by the tornado. Uh Steven says, sorry, I missed the beginning of the tax talk. Can you start over? Uh, I'm sure I just heard a whole bunch of people go, oh, no, please, no. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let's see. What else am I going to go over? I may keep it a little short tonight. Um, so we talked about buy the dip. I mean, I, I'm. everybody seems to be coming out with a 
video that talks about you know this is the six coins that you need to buy and this is the nine coins you need to buy so i'm seriously thinking about coming out with uh you know these are the the best possibility for a 5x uh that uh that have a lot of adoption in other words a lot of use therefore making it more of a value play shall we say i know the the value of it isn't necessarily in like sales and things like that like you think with stocks but i think of value plays in crypto as established coins that have established themselves as providing a service reliably um you know whether it be DeFi, whether it be um you know providing a service to the to the network like with um like I, i've said before filecoin being the storage of of the uh, of crypto and of the internet uh, so things like that um, so i thought about doing that and then three more speculative plays that have reason to possibly be you know much much bigger than where they are today just because of the market they're in or what they're trying to accomplish one of the one of the two of those so i may do that um so definitely thinking about doing that one um all right enough with the market uh so the ellie pal sixth anniversary let's talk about that for a second so like i said ellie pal sent me this but they have uh an offer going on right now it's through shoot let me uh let me pull it up real quick and i will be having a giveaway uh, but unfortunately the person that is their, uh, business development person is actually in the hospital. So I hope she's doing okay. Um, uh, she said she's still re responding to email. So we'll see. I sent her an email clarifying the giveaway, but I will be doing a giveaway for, uh, an Ellie pal wallet, at least one Ellie pal wallet. Um, you know, they're, uh, they're Titan two. Uh, but let me uh, share the screen. So it is going between, uh, it's already been going. Uh, I just got the stuff today. So that's why I was like, oh, let me see when it's going. I'm like, oh, shoot, it's already going on. But uh, through the 21st. So if you buy an Ellie Pal wallet or, or one of their um, bundles, um, you will gain $20 of BTC. On top of that, if you use max voltage as your coupon code, you'll get another $20. Well, you get $20 off of the price. One of the nice things about the bundle uh, is the fact that the cold wallet itself, uh, the Titan 2, is $169. Not cheap, but I'll talk a little bit about why it's an advantage. And I know everybody here, and I have a tangent as well. I love my tangent. Uh, but... I will explain the difference between the two and why I really like the LE Pal as well uh, as a more secure wallet. Um, but 169, so for another $30, you can actually, with the bundle, get one of these to hold your seed phrase. So that's different, it's basically half price from buying that seed phrase, uh, steel seed phrase uh, by itself. So it's a great deal to buy along with the Ellie Pell Titan 2.0. So what, is the, what does the Ellie Pell do different than the Tangem? Well, the Tangem, obviously, it's got NFC. So there's always a risk that somebody could intercept that signal. Is it likely? No. Uh, even they, if they did intercept it, is it likely that they could decrypt it? No, it's not likely. But there's that possibility. With the Ellie Pell, it is what they call air gapped, meaning that you have to have this device and with the camera of the phone looking at it. So there is, you do not hold them next to each other. You have to be very deliberate about it. There's not like somebody could sneak up and say, hey, let me have your, uh, your phone. And you know, it's it just not the way it is. While if somebody could somehow figure out how to... Um, decrypt the NFC uh, signal coming off of a tangent, 
there would be that possibility. Like I said, is it likely? No. Has it happened before? No, it has not. Uh, so, but it doesn't mean that it's kind of like uh, the difference between Lotto and uh, uh, Powerball. So are you likely to win either of them? No, of course not. But that doesn't mean that the odds of winning Lotto is a lot better than winning the Powerball. So it all depends on the amount of security you're comfortable with. I like having both. Uh, I have kind of my long-term storage on my LePal, and I have uh, things that aren't on the LePal on the Tangem, uh, as well as other things that I may be more likely to trade. Uh, so I may trade them in and out of an exchange. So I look at it as three different levels. You have your exchange, well, there's actually four. You have your exchange, you have your hot wallets, you have your tangent, which I call kind of like a uh, loot cold, lukewarm type wallet. And then you have your cold wallet that's like an Ellie Pal. So um, I, I look at it that way. Um, anyway, I like it. Uh, I'm using it. Uh, I, like I said, I use the tangent as well. Uh, I just think they serve uh, two different markets. Uh, and for me, it works really well having two. And why put all your eggs in one basket? Um, it's it's good to have multiple good wallets, reliable wallets. Uh, I mean, Trezor is not bad. Um, there was some, I don't remember what it was. There was some recent bad uh, publicity that they got. And I don't remember what it was. I just remember thinking, oh, not Trezor too. Because uh, I actually thought about, there's a way to like build your own Trezor. Uh, and I was thinking about doing that and then just kind of got away from it. Uh, but I, yeah, uh, I think Trezor, I believe, is open source, if I remember correctly. Uh, I, I don't know. Anyway, I, I don't know a lot about them. Obviously, Ledger, no, I'm trying to stay away as far away from that as I can. They kind of betrayed everybody with what they were trying to do. And I get what they were trying to do, but they should have made it like even just sell different products. I mean, I, I, I get it because I said that there's different levels of risk with keeping your crypto secure. If you keep it in an exchange, you have very little chance of losing your password to get in. You have your 2FA, you're going to be able to get into your exchange. But obviously, you don't hold your crypto. You could get ripped off. All those things can happen. So obviously, you don't want to necessarily do that, at least not with a lot of your money. So then you think, okay, well, I'm going to keep my stuff in a hot wallet. Well, again, hot wallets can be are easier to uh, hack and get into, especially if somebody hacks your phone. Uh, so then you say, okay, fine. Now I want to keep it on a tangent. Well, that that's fine. But what happens if you lose your card so and lose your seed phrase. So there's always that possibility. The good thing with the tangent, obviously, is you have multiple of them. That's one huge, huge benefit of the, the tangent. You're not going to buy two Ellie pals to do the same thing. You're just not. So, um, but again, now you have the Ellie pal. Yes, you have the possibility of losing your, um, uh, your seed phrase and then what? Uh, especially if you're somehow your Ellie pal goes haywire. So definitely want to keep, make sure that you keep your crypto uh, safe. Uh, let's see. Yes, Joker Miner, I did say giveaway. Uh, I got to figure that out. Uh, definitely was thinking about doing its standalone video on that. Uh, so we will hopefully do that this week. That'll be my first priority this week. Uh, Retro Mike said, the recent hack was Trezor's Twitter account, not the actual device. Got it. Remember, something was hacked. I just didn't remember what it was. Uh, Martin, since you're on that topic and I'm interested, can you please explain Trezor versus Tangem? I have a Trezor just thinking it's the best option. I was just thinking if it's the best option. Thank you. Um, I haven't heard anything bad about Trezor as far as getting hacked and things like that. Um, if I remember correctly, it's a USB connection. I, honestly, I, I really can't talk uh, that uh, strongly about Trezor just because I don't know enough about them. I'd spent a while since, since uh, but I do know that a lot of people have recommended them in the past, uh, and I haven't seen any of those recommendations going away. Like with Ledger, people were like, okay, we're done. Um, Josh 
I need something my wife can use with basic instructions stored somewhere. Uh, this is crypto. There aren't like super easy things. Uh, you, you have you have to know, and that's part of the part of the safeness of it. Um, and the more inconvenient the storage of crypto is, the less likely it is to get hacked. So you need something my wife can use with basic instructions stored somewhere. That's obviously an exchange would be the easiest, but again, that's the thing. Uh, hot wallet. Sure. That's going to be a little bit harder than an exchange, but still relatively easy. And then the easiest hardware wallet is in my opinion is going to be tangent. Um, but again, needs to be taught how to use it. Um, <laughs> I actually wrote out some instructions for her, uh, at least so that if, if she can't figure it out, somebody else could come in and help out. Um, Doquan backdoored his treasure. Okay. I don't know if that's what I was thinking of, but yeah, there's, I, you know, I don't know. The, we're all trusting that something is uh going to keep our stuff safe and there there has to be some sort of trust that that is going to happen some company like ellie pal it's been around for six years yeah that's going to be better than somebody that just came around I mean, honestly that's one of the things i don't think tangent's been around that long i don't think that they're a bad company i'm just saying that that has to be taken into account when you're thinking about what you're going to use uh okay thank you yeah yes treasure t is USB C. I thought so um yeah carl cote paper wallet for the win yeah you could definitely go that direction just be straight um seed phrase um second tl hey welcome uh retro mike 100 didn't look easy at least at all at least what i watched not something I would ever be sexful, successful at for sure. What did Retro Mike say? What did I miss? Uh, not sure. It must have been quite a while ago because I'm not seeing it. Wait a minute. Was this it? Nope. Yep. Don't know. Sorry. Oh. Uh, so retro Mike says second TL mining. Yes, but it required the device to be in hand and a precise probe and was the original model that didn't have the secure element. Good point. Okay, cool. Oh, it was right above that. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> 129 people watching. Oh, 134 people watching. Uh, I had 65 likes. What do I have now? I can't tell. I don't think I've expanded this out far enough to look at the likes, but if you haven't hit that like button. It's very, very much appreciated. And I, there we go. Now it's back. Okay. Let's see. Oh, uh, retro Mike says always look for wallets that allow you to configure your own RPC server. Most use their own central RPC servers. And if those shut down, you're out of luck. Hmm. Interesting was not aware of that. I will have to look into that. All right, good. Appreciate you posting that. I'm really curious cuz uh obviously I haven't configured my own RPC server for any of my wallets. Hmm. All righty. That's food for thought. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Retro Mike. Um Zarkov says, what does that even mean? I, hey, you know what? Retro Mike, make a video. <laughs> There's some motivation for you. Make a video. And if you have a quick list of which ones allow that, that would be helpful as well. All right. Uh, yes, it, I don't think, I, the only reason why I think you have to close chat is if you're on the phone. But yes, if you're on the phone, in order to hit the like button, you do have to close chat. It's been that way for quite a while. I do that every morning with uh, with Trump change. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, <laughs> if he's still here. <laughs> okay, let's see. What else was I going to talk about tonight? 
Um, oh, electrical issues. Let me, uh, so anyway, so bottom line is this one's 169. You get $20 in BTC, bringing it down to the equivalent of 149. And if you use my coupon code, uh, you can get it down to 129 equivalent uh, with both the $20 BTC as well as that coupon code. So there you go. So if you're interested, and like I said, I will... As soon as I hear back, uh, I will move forward with the giveaway. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, let's move on to the electrical issues. And I don't have any uh, video or anything for this, but I found it really interesting. So yesterday I was doing some stuff, I was doing taxes, and as I always do, I periodically check my VAST rigs on my computer. And all of a sudden, everything except for the one behind me was down. And I knew exactly what that meant. That the one circuit breaker had blown. And I was like, what? I just tried to fix that. Uh, so when I say that, I moved something off of the 30 amp circuit because I was running above 24 amps. Again, above that 80% rule. Um, and... So I moved something onto what I thought was a separate circuit from most of the rest of the basement. So what I thought I had was uh, a, a circuit for just the entertainment center, one for just the bathroom, one for just the bar, and one for most of the rest of the basement outlets. And then the laundry room, which I thought was also feeding my daughter's computer. So circuit blue immediately saw that it was the basement outlet entertainment center. And I'm like, what? Everything was down, including the switch was, which was not plugged into those outlets. I was like, Oh, you gotta be kidding me. So I turned it back on. Everything came back, but I knew I needed to move two of the things that I thought were on that entertainment center. And I moved them to the bar circuit, which actually is a 20 amp circuit versus a 15 amp. So actually was probably a better idea anyway uh it was well within the i mean it was not even using half of the 20 amps on that so um it was like 800 watts or so maybe 900 uh so again not using anywhere near the capacity of that circuit um and so now everything's fine but then i'm like where the heck is this basement outlet circuit that i thought i was running everything off of or running a lot of things like the window fan uh the switch all these low power things i was running off of that what i that what i thought was the basement outlet uh circuit but they weren't they were on the entertainment center circuit so i'm like all right so the entertainment center or what used to be the entertainment center uh, is on the same wall as I have all my rigs. So I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. But then I went, I turned off that basement outlet circuit. And my daughter's computer that's right next to the laundry room, I did confirm that is actually on the laundry room circuit, which is fine. But the thing that was halfway across the basement, uh, it was a fan that was pulling air from the opposite window and that was still running and i'm like where the heck is this basement outlet so i'm gonna have to do some checking figure out what outlets that's actually covering so i can decide okay fine now what can i plug into this uh, may affect when i put other things in the basement uh of whether or not uh you know where i can plug those things in and not affect um everything else that is running so anyway it was uh a bit of a conundrum uh when i figured this all out uh there are definitely a lot of uh energy monitoring systems out there um i know somebody else uh lives just west of me i can't remember who he is a member of the community uh, had told me, hey, you've got the Solar Edge system. Why don't you get uh, this whole home, you know, so, to track what you're actually using, as opposed to just tracking solar power? But the key thing is, is that 
to track every individual circuit is the issue. And again, the whole home power, that's not a problem. I know I'm within the bounds of that. Um, 100 amp is what I've got. I'm, I'm, I'm within the bounds of that if I can't put in another 30 amp circuit, but right now with only one 30 amp circuit, I'm fine. Uh, so I would need to monitor each and every circuit. But like I said, I can add, <laughs> I have, and thanks to um, uh, Matt Electron, he sent me a monitor so that I could just plug into it and see what something, what power something runs at. Uh, with Vast, it's a little bit more difficult because things pull, depending on what's running on your Vast system, it's going to pull different rates, but you can pretty much calculate the worst case, which is what you need to calculate it for, is the worst case. Otherwise, you're going to run into trouble. All right, I see some chat messages. Scott Sheffield says, you need one of those plug testers that buzzes on the wand at the breaker so you can find where each plug goes in the breaker box. Buzzes on the wand at the breaker. Oh, I see. It'll be easier than that. I just need to have a simple device turn off the breaker and just start plugging things in in the basement. If something doesn't work, then that's the circuit. So it, it's going to be pretty simple. It just seems like I, I actually meant to ask my daughter because she's got downstairs, she's got a TV and PlayStation and all that kind of stuff. And that's plugged in where I, th what I think is considered the basement circuit. Uh, but I will have to do some testing to find that out. But anyway, like I said, it says it's basement outlets. Assuming that that's the case, it shouldn't be that difficult for me to find. I just got to take some small device, take some old like clock or something. It doesn't really matter and plug it in. If the lights go on, then obviously that isn't the one if I've turned the circuit off uh, and go from there. Uh, let's see. My, oh, Geek of All Trade says my, is it Empria or Emporia? You've spelled it two different ways. Uh, <laughs> has 16 individual circuit meters plus the whole house monitor too. Um, interesting. Interesting. Uh, I have to look into that. Uh, Ert Ted, why haven't you done a video on that, Geek? You should do a video on that. Educate us all. Uh, Ert Ted says, are those two circuit breakers on top of each other? If so, they might have double lugged it and missed the basement circuit. No, they're separate. They're se you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're separated. I'm pretty sure they're separated. I'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, Klein Tools ET310 Circuit Breaker Finder. Like I said, it's going to be a lot simpler than that. Uh, our, our panel is well marked. It just obviously when they did the basement weren't as explicit as they could have been uh, on the basement outlets. So I will look into those things if, if I have that problem. Uh, let's see. Geek of all trades. I do have a video on that. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. I guess I'll have to look up that, uh, that video. Uh, the stick shark agrees with you. Goat Emporia view is great. Okay. I keep seeing different. Is it Empria Emporia? Draw.io perfect layout planning. I don't need layout planning. I'm not planning on re, you know, redoing the circuits of my house. I just, everything else I have figured out. Emporia. Thank you. It's Emporia. Oh, okay. Yeah, he corrected himself. <laughs> yeah. Type it too fast. Type it too fast. Your name is Max Voltage for Pete's sake. Yeah. <laughs> Sunflower Mama just says, your name is Max Voltage for Pete's sake. Oh, oh okay. Got it. Um, S Chang says you can plug an extension cord to the outlet of question and bring it to the panel with a light on it. So you can see it right away. If that's the right breaker, like I said, I'm just going to turn the breaker off and start plugging into plugs. If something doesn't go on, that's, that's it. And then I can turn the breaker on and be like, okay, that's one of the plugs. It's, it's not difficult. 
I don't don't need something complicated to solve this one small issue. Well, like I said, I don't. Everything is on. I just turn the one off and then start plugging in. If something doesn't go on, that's that circuit. Um, stop here after work this week. You can borrow my circuit tester. I don't need to test your. Ah. And it's certainly not on my way home. That's like 50 mi- 40 miles out of my way. <laughs> but thanks. I do appreciate it. I do very much appreciate it. You just want those. you just like, hey, as long as you're coming, why don't you bring those uh, motherboard uh, power cables for the T5910? <laughs> Still have those sitting right next to me. See? Still have them. Thanks, veteran miner. I bought them from him. I didn't. He didn't give them to me, but they are very nice cables. If anybody needs extra power, where they have basically what that does is that takes one CPU power plug and powers both CPUs. If you have a lower power CPU, you can power it off of both plugs, and then you can use the other one to power GPUs. So, uh, Joker miner, you jinxed my vast forty seventy. Yeah, my, that's the only rig last time I checked that was not rented. And is it still not rented? It's still not rented. Everything else is rented. I have that thing at ten and a half cents, and it's still not rented. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking um, of taking that and, I don't know, one other rig. I've not decided which one, um, and trying it on different platforms just for fun. Um haven't decided what i mean obviously one of them will be flux uh so i was thinking about putting that 4070 on flux to start out and see where we go from there uh let's see (laughs) geek of all trades fine i feel the love bro (laughs) hey you have an open invitation to come on down we've talked about that it's getting lighter at night (laughs) um That's true. I'm not even on VAST, but they'll come in handy for proof of useful work. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Like I said, I have I bought four of those cables, and uh, but I only used two of them because the other ones I didn't put two processors in. Nine cents for you, and you're still not rented. Dang. It, I just I think part of the problem is is that so many platforms have come on that people have just decided to try to flock to another platform. I don't know how successful that's being, but I don't know. All right, let's see. Was there anything else I was going to talk about? I did have one other thing. Um, I was curious to get your guys' feedback. I'm going to do a poll. Start a poll. Do you have an ass? Yes, no. Start poll. So let me know if you guys have a NAS, because I've been seriously thinking about it because, I mean, our storage for pictures and videos and all that kind of stuff is everywhere. It's on this external hard drive and this external hard drive and, you know, this uh internal hard drive i've got a uh, two terabit one that i use for backup and it's just kind of all over the place and i would really like to have a central point where i can back up my computers to and make sure that i have raid protection on the important pictures and videos of our lives um so yes Get an ass, great for backups. Oh, there isn't a question about whether or not I want to get one. Uh, I was just curious who had one. Uh, I think you said, do you have an ass? <laughs> oh, that's funny not, James. I can see how you would think that. Um, no. Do you have a NAS? <laughs> uh, let's see. Where did the hatred come, come from? Hold on a second. Oh, geek about see you later, geek. Uh, okay, got a, got a, some prints swapped out 
and hit the sack. More server reporting in the morning. Good night, all. Good night. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Retro Mike Vast is trash. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I get very frustrated with it at times, but it does pay the bills. It is. It is definitely paying the bills. The key is that 8 by 49 needs to stay rented. It wasn't rented for a little bit. So, yeah. But it, sometimes it's really good, though. Like, not last week, but the week before was really good. Um, all right, let's see. So, like I said, second TL said, get an ass. Great for backups. Um, let's see. John Engel, NAS is great. Synology is great. Synology 2 bay mirror. So I was thinking about getting a 4 bay. The 2 bay, I'm just like, do you think the 2 bay is enough? I mean, obviously, I suppose if you get big enough hard drives, you can, you know, just do redundancy on, on both of them. Uh, Retromix says, really like Synology. They give you access to the enterprise features on the smaller consumer devices. I've also had Asister in the past. Super nice too. Are you going to build your own or well? And that was the next question. Who has built? Who has gotten one off the shelf? And who has built one? I was kind of thinking of building my own. I was actually thinking about using a uh, a Raspberry Pi four, but Jeff Gerling uh, and a few other people have done it, and it has some severe drawbacks on the Raspberry Pi 4. Raspberry Pi 5 is not bad. Uh, I know that the Zima does a really nice job, uh, but that's only going to be a two drive model while the Raspberry Pi 5 has like a, has a, has a hat that you can put on it that does five drives actually. Uh, if you do, um, uh, SSD drives, um, there's a U green one that's brand new, but from the reviews, they basically have said it's not, quite baked yet uh has some significant issues so far uh is really cool though because it has a four bay model and then you can also put in two ssds so that's the other thing there is actually some raspberry pi hats that have um m.2 ssds that you can uh use instead of the uh uh regular uh pcie ones but the thing is is that that's it's not necessarily a waste but you're not going to get that performance out of it unless you're like have a 10 gig ethernet uh which i don't i have basically a, anything that plugs in other than my computer is plugged in at one gig i have two and a half gig out to the network i have 10 gig between my router and the router in the basement to get full to get at least two and a half gig full bandwidth going to the basement switch but all of the switches all the switch ports in the basement are all one gig so i don't have a you know it's good, but whether or not I'm doing SSD or spinning hard drives, I would definitely see a benefit with SSDs. Probably wouldn't see a benefit with, well, I definitely wouldn't be see a benefit with NVMe. All right, let's see. Um, let's see. I'm going to back up a bit because I think I missed a few things. Now, let me, I'll get back to that in just one second. Uh, let's see. Run all my retro mics says run all my Docker containers on my Synology NAS. Really? Huh? So basically you can run it kind of like a server. You know, if you have containers that you want to run. Interesting. Uh, I hear a lot of votes for Synology. Uh, another one said QNAP. Uh, Synology can also auto back up to the storage network. If you're wanting a NAS that can also back up to decentralized storage. Hmm. That's interesting. Very interesting. All right. What did Hawk says? I keep <laughs> NAS. How's that? Hey, at least it's not as bad as your, what were you pronouncing? Yeah, I wish I could remember. Tell me what you're pronouncing that you, you were pronouncing with ass at the end when it was supposed to be as. Uh, let's see. Minimum five bay for ZFS raid. Uh, I probably wouldn't get that high as far as raid, but. Swamp 7, you're way more advanced than I am. Oh, I actually need to talk to you, Swamp 7. Uh, do you have 
Um, and I know Retro Michael love this. So, like right now, my 4070 that's not running on Vast is actually mining. But uh, it's mining Pyron, but it's not mining Pyron and Zill. So, do you have a container out there somewhere uh, that has the LOL... Um, the LOL miner, but it's not LOL miner. It's like LOL Zill or Zip or something like that. Uh, do you have that out there? Because there's a special um, uh, application that will run Zill along with LOL miner. Obviously, you can do it automatically in Hive OS because it's going to figure it out. But if you're running it command line, um, there is a different command, but it has to be a different package. Let me know. Shoot me a, if you can, shoot me a, uh, a DM if you know the answer to that. Second TL, if you're building your own, I've been looking of doing CWWK motherboard and then into a John's bow in three case. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Retro Mike said, sorry, I did not see it. I closed my Discord. Still need to remove the link from my videos if you need to message me. Oh, okay. Uh, that was a personal message. Uh, Rushmai, can can give you a walkthrough of Synology one evening if you want to see all the features and what you can configure. Yeah, I'd love that um, when I have a free evening. Um, yeah, I will, I'll definitely keep that in mind. This was just something I was thinking about over the weekend because we were moving uh, pictures and uh, Sunflower Mom is going to be doing more videos. So I started thinking, yeah, we're going to lose track of stuff, and I don't want to lose track of stuff anymore. Um, yeah. Uh, way to kill my buzz. Why am I killing your buzz? What did I do to kill your buzz? Because uh, we're talking about NAS. NAS? How's that? <laughs> Is Jasbo still in business? That's a good question. I thought they were. Uh, Swamp7 can put together a Docker image tomorrow. Yeah, send you a DM. Okay, thanks. So you understand what I was saying. So I appreciate that. Um, Amplifier Gaming. It's been, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. Uh, I can't, do not have any complaints. All right. Any other, that was all I have. Anybody have any other questions? If you guys want to go back to the tax questions, I can certainly do that. Um, uh, but, uh, let me know if you guys have any more questions. Otherwise we will close up the stream. It's been a little over an hour. Generally what I normally, I usually shut off about this time. Almost doesn't even matter when I start. It always seems like this is about the time. Uh, yeah. Sadie sometimes. Oh, reminder. Yes. Oh, let me go back to the, uh, the, let me end the poll. So 35% of you have a NAS. Nice. Very nice. Oh, wait a minute. I guess I didn't scroll down far enough. I was definitely, uh, I think. Oh, no, I guess not. Uh, what about John's Plus? I love their lineup. No lie, it's the best. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's lots of good cases out there. No question. Lots of good cases out there. Yes, and Joker Minor, yes. Stay safe, everybody. Stay aware. Um, what have I been mining recently? Uh, I have been mining Pyron. I've been debating on to move to other things. Uh, warm temperatures have kind of kept me away from Kapow. Uh, but, um, yeah, there's definitely been some things that have been of interest to me. Let me, uh, look at good old hash rate dot. No. Cause the 4090, I mean, Graham, I'm just not interested in, um, I actually almost went back to mining Alephium because it's almost equivalent to Pyron. Uh, what else? I really don't have that much interest in who said it's basically pretty much equivalent to mining Pyron. So right now I'm mining Pyron, selling and buying Neoxa. So I'm pretty much up to 400,000 Neoxa right now. So making progress on that front. Um, yeah, it's... Nothing really floating my boat as far as um, profitability and coins I'm interested in other than Alephium and Pyrum. Um, like I said, both of those are going to be low, lower power coins. So that's the reason why I like mining those right now as we head into the summer months. 
I may take a look at Meowcoin at some point just because I like to see how much less power they use. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I'm mining basically. Um, let's see. Carlson is real nice right now. Huh, okay. Uh, do you believe in Pyren? I don't know what the project really does. Just seems like a profit chaser coin. I mean, there's a lot of coins like that out there where they just exist because they can, and yet they still have value. Um, so I don't stay in it more than probably sell no less than once a day. Probably more like twice a day. Sometimes even if I'm bored three times a day. <laughs> so all depends. All depends. Yes, second TL, I am going to do a Neoxinode. The question is, how am I going to do a Neoxinode? Am I going to do a Neoxinode on Node Orbit? Am I going to do one on Flux? Or am I just going to do one on my machine back there? Thought about starting on Flux and then migrating onto my own machine. So doing it for like one month on Flux just to like do a video of how to set it up. I mean, the, the nice thing, if I had more than one Neoxa node, I would absolutely do it on Flux, no question, because you can do three Neoxa nodes for the price of one. So node orbit is $6 a month, so is uh, Flux, but you can do three nodes, but you, you're paying for the same amount, whether it's one or three. So they're equivalent to node orbit as far as price. Um, uh, but kind of like the idea of doing it myself, but I also don't know what the repercussions are. I don't know enough about it to know what the repercussions are. If you don't meet a certain level of reliability, you know, what, what are you risking? Is it like flux where you just get shoved to the end of the line and you have to wait for your time in the line to come back up before you get a reward or something else? I don't know. So uh, like I said, I'll have to do some research on that because if that's the case, then I probably will just run it on flux because uh, the odds of it going down on flux because the, the redundancy and such is a lot less uh, than if I was running it on my own machine. But I have six cores available on that machine behind me. So I believe if I remember correctly, you only need two cores, four threads uh, to run a Neoxinode. Uh, Amplify Gaming said, I bought an energy miner from the Fry Foundation with flux. So now I got everything on unminable getting flux so I can rebuild my bag. That's cool. Uh, Max, look in Pecunia for Neoxinode. What is Pecunia? Not sure what that means. Right now I've got everything in inode, so it is making some Neoxa on top of it. So obviously the more I get, the more I'll, I'll, I'll make. So that'll definitely help me get to that a million that I need to get to. Uh, Paddywhack Miner set up my own machine. Looks nice and easy. Yeah, I, I figured it won't be too difficult to do it on my own machine. I just want to make sure that, um, you know, what are the repercussions? I mean, that one is my most reliable machine compared to all the ones downstairs. Don't ask me why, but it just runs. And um, yeah, couldn't really tell you why. Uh, it is hooked directly to the router. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Uh, Ertet says, is your Neoxa on iNodes? Yes, it is on uh, iNodes right now. Um, I use Pecunia for Anokis nodes. Oh, so it's just another node provider. Got it. Um, yeah, I'll have, to look, I'll have to look it up. Oh, Rabbit uses Pecunia. Oh, interesting. Oh, there's only 15 Neoxa nodes on Flux? Really? That's interesting. That's kind of a shame. Uh, if anybody has more than one Neoxa node, it seems to make a lot of sense to put it on Flux. Um, T-Dub says, I have 11 nodes on Pecunia. Great prices, actually. I'll have to take a look. Uh, Amplifier Gaming says, don't let the hobbyist miner hear you talk about iNodes. He despises it. I mean, the, the reason why... He despises it because you just don't know. There's no way to know for sure you're going to be able to get your money out. Are you going to be left holding the bag? There was another service that ran into some problems and got hacked. 
uh, similar to inodes. It was much more new to the market, but there's always that possibility. How is it any different than putting it on an exchange, except less regulated than an exchange? So it, it's definitely a risk. There's definitely a risk. Uh, I think that's what hobbyist. That I know that that's what hobbyist is saying. You know, what are the what are the? It's all about probabilities. What are the chances of something going wrong at inodes? Like I said, probably relatively small, but it's definitely much higher than you would find on just an exchange. So something to keep in mind. Definitely want to be very careful and have things thought out. Uh, let me see. Uh, do you see a difference between inodes and the Flux Titan? Um, yes, because the Flux Titan, I mean, the Flux Titan is you're staking directly on their blockchain you know so you're you're staking actually with the the project i know you're not staking with the project you're staking with a company that basically is creating a node for you by accumulating everybody together and then creating a node and now that and again that's the that's the idea that's what they're supposed to be doing and it appears that they're doing that but the Unless you run the back end, you can't possibly know for sure if that's in fact what they're doing. Remember, you had companies like BlockFi and um, others that couldn't pay you back your money because, yes, you were staking and you were getting all this money. So there is a definite risk. But the idea of what iNodes is doing would work if they are implementing it as they say they're implementing it. That's all I'm saying. Do I believe they're implementing it that way? Yes, I do trust them, but I could be wrong. So just do your own research. Um, let's see. Oh, okay, so I got past that. Mine some 10. Good to see you. We're just about to close up the stream now that you got here. <laughs> um. Sleep Money Club has decent group nodes. Actually, that's a good point. Uh, there are, I know that Andy has talked about this on his streams, uh, where people within his community have actually put their coins together to create enough for them to create their own nodes. And well, put it, I think they're mainly going through nor, nor, node orbit, I think. But uh, either way, yes. And that is, if you know the people, yeah, a good thing to do. But the question is, who's going to be kind of holding the bag, shall we say? And that does seem to be kind of difficult from an accounting perspective because um, there's only going to be one wallet for that staked node. Uh, let's see what else we got here. They provide addresses for all nodes. Yeah, they provide addresses, but who has control of them? I'm guessing they're not multi-sig wallets. Um, I suppose they could be. Um that's right, mine sometime you can watch the uh the rerun. <laughs> um all right, I am going to close it up. Yes, cats of crypto. Uh make sure you look at the pinned comment if you do want to donate to Oval Boar's uh family, as well as I fully anticipate that they will exceed what they need for the funeral, and they will between the crypto community and the car community. I am sure they will have quite a bit of money to split between St. Jude's and animal shelters, but it would be great if, if those donations could be made um, in the memorial of uh, Old Vortec or Eric, um, Eric Berger, uh, which, was, which is what his real name was. Um, so definitely a sad day. I'm sure we're all going to be feeling it for a long time. He will always be remembered. Um, yeah, simple as that. He will always be remembered. He will be brought up often. Um, you know, for those of you that have heard Savage Mind's name be remembered, same thing. He, gosh, this is three years ago now, something like that. Um, obviously, totally dis different circumstances, but at the same time, somebody who died way before their time. And uh, yeah, so uh, 
yeah we remember we remember our we remember our community let's just put it that way so again uh thank you and like i said anybody it's in the pinned comment please donate to that if you want Alrighty, guys thanks again for showing up tonight i appreciate it and you guys all have a wonderful evening the general is out